Hey y'all, I'm Lauren and welcome to Cantina Cast. Today I'm talking about the High Republic manga, The Edge of Balance Precedent. And this is the phase two manga written by Daniel Jose Older and Tamio Ogata. This story is a unique part of phase two because it is a manga. So if you're new to manga, I definitely recommend giving Star Wars manga a try because they format it in a way that it won't be completely hard to get into. Um, they format it similar to Western style comic books. So even though it may be a new type of storytelling for you, it does still feel familiar in the way that the panels are arranged and the way that the script is written. And manga is something that's pretty new for me. So I definitely appreciate that with the Star Wars mangas, they are formatting them in this way that if you're new to manga, it helps you get into it and it helps you get used to that new style of storytelling. And I really enjoyed this story. This is a great standalone High Republic story in the way that it's not part of a series. As long as you're generally familiar with the events of Phase 2, like for example, the Battle of Dalna, then this story, it's an easy story to get into because it's not part of a series. Unlike some of the comics where, you know, there's multiple issues that you have to read and keep up with. This is all just one standalone story and you don't have to read it like before or after any of the other books. As long as you have a general familiarity with the events of phase two, I feel like this story is going to be an easy one to get into. And I really got a lot of enjoyment out of reading it. I, I will say it was one of the more it's one of the stories of phase two that captured me more than a few of the others. Like with phase two, I haven't been like quite as emotionally invested as I was in phase one. But this story, it is like one of the standout stories. When I was reading it, I actually couldn't put it down. Like I was really getting into it. I really wanted to see what became of these characters, even though we didn't really get to spend a lot of time with them. These characters just captured me pretty quickly. And it's really no surprise that this is the case because the story was written by Daniel Jose Older and Midnight Horizon uh, from phase one, written by the same author, was one of my favorite phase one reads, which is really saying something because I'm pretty sure I loved like pretty much every phase one novel. So I trust Daniel Jose Older in a big way. And this story really delivered for me. And even if you're new to manga, if you haven't read a tongue of manga, if you've never read manga before, I encourage you to give the story a try if you're interested in phase two at all. Because it really was one of the more striking stories for me. And as I was saying earlier, the way that Star Wars formats their mangas, it's going to be pretty easy to follow if you're used to reading comics. Now I'm going to give a summary of the plot. So if you don't want spoilers and you're planning on reading the story, now is your time to turn back. At the opening of the story, one thing that I particularly appreciated about it is that we're opening with we're take the opening is actually taking place during the time of phase one. We see Marky on row on the page and he's looking for something and he's being led by a guide named Volgarit. And he looks like kind of like a sort of like spider alien type of person, which is called a harch. And they're looking for something. They're kind of arguing with each other while they're trying to find it. And he leads him to this place. And it's, it seems like Volgarit is like the only person person who knows how to find what Markion's looking for and it's something that's really important to them and this place that he leads them to there is a droid that it seems to be keeping watch over this area kind of like he's guarding something and the droid starts recounting the story of how exactly he ended up in this place what he's doing here and the way that the droid kind of justifies it as he's like well all these people are probably dead this happened so long ago I guess I'll tell you why I'm here and so most of the rest of the manga after this point is a flashback and in this flashback we have Arkoff and we have Master Ravna who is Arkoff's master and Arkoff is a Wookiee so if you love Wookiee Jedi then this is definitely a story that you have to read and then we also have ZZ, who is the same droid that's now keeping guard of we don't know what yet. And they're all together fighting in the Battle of Dalna. And the cool thing about Master Ravna is she's a little old lady and she's really holding her own in this battle. She doesn't look like she could do it, but she's very powerful. And she seems like she has a really great relationship with Arkov too. She's instructing him. She's 
giving him really good leadership and advice, and he seems to really respect her and be taking it. So I always love a good master and apprentice relationship that seems to be solid. And also at this battle is Volgaret. So he has been around l surviving since the Battle of Dalna through to phase one. So I get the impression that he's just that type of species that can live a really long time. But during this battle, Master Ravna says to Arkoff, like, we got to go help the other Jedi. And so they go and they find Aslan, who is a Jedi Knight. Aslan does appear briefly in other Phase 2 High Republic stories. But in this particular story, we get a lot more insight into why Aslan is so disturbed when we see him in those other phase two stories. And the reason for that is because when Master Ravna and Arkov are trying to help Aslan, they end up getting separated by a big wave that comes as a result of some of the explosions that are going on in the tunnels beneath Dalna. And we learn more about what those explosions are in Path of Vengeance, but for the purposes of this story, we know that there's a rogue wave that comes, it separates them, and it, when they're separated, Aslan does have an encounter with a Nameless. And when Aslan has this encounter, the hallucination of the Nameless is very intense. And this is one thing about this story that I appreciated a lot as well, is I feel like the way that the artwork is done here, and the, just the way that this sort of progression of events is arranged on the page, it really, it helped me understand why exactly it is that none of the Jedi have really been able to put together the fact that the hallucinations that they're seeing are a result of the Nameless or the Leveler. Because I know that in previous videos, I've been like, why is it that nobody is like, nobody's guessed it? Like, or, I mean, there's, there's certain Jedi that have an idea, but for the most part, none of the Jedi that have actually had a close encounter with the leveler or a nameless have been able to put together like it's the creature that's causing the problem. And that's something that I've been kind of like scratching my head about. Like, if you're that close to it, how do you not know? But, and, and I'm sure that there's other comics that also have also handled this well too. But for some reason, this one just worked particularly well for me in getting this point across. But the art in this, it really does show how when Aslan is having this hallucination, he can't actually see really any part of reality. The hallucination is so immersive that he can't see the actual creature itself. He just sees the creatures from his hallucin hallucinations. So that was something that was insightful for me and kind of like helped me have a better understanding of some of the other events that have been going on in phase two. And once they're separated, Aslan is not the only one that has an encounter with a nameless, um, but Arkoff actually has an encounter as well and also has that very immersive, fearful experience where he's really having a hard time making sense of what exactly is going on, what is reality. But weirdly enough, Master Ravna, she does feel it. She can feel the presence. She can feel that there's a disturbance. But she does not have the same level of like just completely being beside herself that we've seen pretty much every other Jedi have. So that is something that is really unique about this character. And it's something that I'm hoping that we learn more about in the future, because why is it that she seems like even though she's disturbed by it, she's still able to keep her head on. And so I would like to understand a little bit more about why that is. Is it just because she's a very powerful Jedi? Or is there something more to that? I think that remains to be seen. And when Arkov comes out of the hallucination, he cannot find Master Ravna, but he does find her lightsaber. And she has previously really gotten on to him before about kind of like misplacing his lightsaber. So when he finds her lightsaber abandoned, it means a lot. It, and what that says to him is that she's dead because she's such a stickler about don't let go of your lightsaber that she, there's no way that she would let go of it unless she was dead. And so Arkov buries the lightsaber. Aslan is able to get to safety. So he survives the encounter with the leveler, but he is now mentally and emotionally very disturbed. He is not the same after this encounter. And this is, a, this is an instance where the leveler is having a longer lasting effect on him than we have typically seen. Because it's kind of like, even, even though he's in safety now, 
he he feels like he's still in the presence of the leveler and those emotions are really lingering with him and they're staying in his mind unfortunately this ultimately leads to him having to be placed in a sort of facility that's able to care for him because he is not the same person anymore and he needs professional help but while aslan is staying in this facility he is writing in his journal a lot about the hallucinations that he's having and while he's doing this, Volgarit, who during the Battle of Dalna, he was able to put together that if he, because he saw the effect that the Nameless had on the Jedi. And he was like, if I can understand how exactly this works, then I'll have the power to destroy the Jedi forever. And he's like, a, he's been a path member for the long time. So he really believes in this mission that the path is doing. And because Aslan is in this facility and he's writing all this down, Volgarit does track him down and goes through a lot of effort to try to get that journal from Aslan. But the first time that he encounters Aslan, he doesn't understand the value of the journal. So he like rips some pages out of it. He kind of beats Aslan up in his room because he's trying to get information out of him. And then he ends up having to run because people hear that he's there. At this point, Volgarit is not finished with trying to get information out of Aslan that he feels will benefit him in the path. And meanwhile, Arkoff and ZZ, the droid, are still looking for Master Ravna back on Dalna. It, they're not really finding her. Eventually, they are kind of have to make the decision that they have to go back to Coruscant. So Arkoff goes back to Coruscant and reports Master Ravna's death to the council. And then after that, he wants to go help Aslan because he feels like that's part of preserving Master Ravna's legacy is wanting to help the other Jedi, and especially since they were together on Dalna for that time. And so when he goes to visit Aslan, Aslan is still in that state of he's having hallucinations. He really can't carry out a conversation with Arkoff because the hallucinations are so intense still, even though the leveler isn't here, that it that instance, it has damaged him irreparably. Arkoff eventually has to leave because the conversation doesn't go very well. Aslan is very upset during this time. And so Arkoff leaves and then when he goes back to try again, there is evidence that someone has broken into the facility who it's pretty clear to the reader that it was Volgarit and Aslan is nowhere to be found. And Arkoff runs out of the place and he is able to catch up to Volgarit who does have Aslan and they end up fighting. And this is a pretty tough fight because Volgara is humongous and a really good fighter. So it's it's kind of up in the air as to what's going to happen. But Aslan actually uses the force and kind of like explodes his powers out and causes a, a lot of destruction in this area where they were fighting. Volgara is crushed under some debris and is injured enough to where they're able to get away from him. So fortunately, even though Aslan still is not mentally well at this point he was able to still help Arkoff win the fight and and be a really big assistance when that was needed and Aslan ends up giving his journal to Arkoff and he says if you read this then hopefully you'll know when it's coming for you hopefully what I wrote can help you in some way Arkoff takes a journal and he really has a hard time trying to decipher it but he seems to really be convinced that there is something in this journal that he can use to the Jedi's benefit. So he's putting in a lot of time and effort trying to decipher Aslan's strange kind of code that he was writing in. But during this time, unfortunately, Aslan disappears from the facility once again without a trace. They don't know where he is and he's never found after this point. So really Arkoff's only hope is figuring out what is written in this journal. But deciphering the journal is taking longer than they want it to, and they also still want to find Aslan. So Arkoff and ZZ have to make the decision to hide the journal in a safe place. And ZZ convinces Arkoff to, they're going to hide the journal on Banshee. That's the place that they've determined is the safest. And ZZ is actually going to stay behind and guard the journal. And this was a really sad moment because there's like, there's an image of ZZ down in this sort of hole in the ground, sitting on top of some things that are covering the journal up, just trying to keep it, I guess, like out of sight. And then you see Arkoff like dragging this stone over the top of the hole or like dragging this lid over the top of the hole that ZZ is in. And 
you can see it on Arkoff's face that he feels horrible leaving ZZ in there. But it was ZZ's idea. ZZ really felt passionate about really wanting to make sure that he was able to guard the journal. He wants to, he still has like that loyalty to Master Ravna as well. So that's part of it as well, why he feels like this is his job that he needs to do. And Arkoff ends up letting him do it because he really doesn't have a choice. He does need ZZ to do this. But it was, I mean, it was really sad seeing them kind of make that decision, even though what that means is that ZZ is going to be in that hole guarding the journal for who knows how long. And then that's when we come back to the present, which the present day of this novel would be during the time period of phase one in the High Republic, where we have ZZ telling this story from the past. And so when we come back to the present, we see that uh, Volgarit is sitting there listening to the story and he's like, wow, so we're the first people that, that you've seen, so now you can't stop talking to us. And ZZ's like, oh, no, I was calling Arkoff. <laughs> so that's why ZZ's telling this whole long story is to buy him time because he called Arkoff and Arkoff is on his way there right now to defend the journal. And Volgarit is like, well, even if any Jedi did survive from Starlight, because this takes place after the fall of Starlight Beacon, then they're still, you know, by the time they actually get here, I will have taken this journal from you and I'm going to be gone. So you've got no hope. And this is when ZZ reveals that he actually has a ton of blasters that are now part of his sort of mechanics that Arkoff modified him to have. So not only is he just sitting there keeping watch over the journal, but he actually does have the means to guard it. But unfortunately for him to guard the journal effectively, he also is going to have to self-destruct because it's better for him to destruct and for the journal to destruct than for it to end up in the hands of the Nihil. And ZZ is ready to self-destruct because he feels that that's really his only option. The Jedi won't get there before the journal is taken because of just how Volgarit is still able to overpower him anyway. And so he's just about to self-destruct and Arkoff shows up right at that moment and is able to defeat Volgarit. And so Arkoff and ZZ are reunited after all this time and they it's a really beautiful moment of them being together again after the way that Arkoff had to leave ZZ behind. And just the connection between the droid and Arkoff was just so special to me. And that's one reason that I just really loved this manga is getting to see that moment of them being reunited. We also find out that ZZ is going to be okay. He's going to be repaired. And he's also going to get to work with a new Jedi as well. And so he still like he still has a purpose and he gets to actually live out his purpose in a much more pleasant way than what he had been doing by guarding this journal. Everybody has a happy ending. Arkoff does have the journal in his possession again. And I really hope that this somehow connects to maybe how they get some answers about the leveler in phase three. Because now Arkoff has all of Aslan's writings again. The implications of that are really cool. Of Maybe there's a way that we can actually get some answers about the leveler because of all of the work that Aslan put into writing everything down in this journal. And all of the work that Arkoff and ZZ went through to protect that journal. So I really hope that that ends up connecting into phase three because of everything that these characters sacrificed to protect this information. But with that being said, something that was really special about this story to me is that as I've been reading a lot of phase two, I've I've been feeling like I'm kind of having to do like clue hunting and just being like on the lookout for little details to try to piece together. Like it's felt very much like I'm I'm like I'm on like a scavenger hunt while I'm reading. And so, I mean, and it's for better or worse. Like sometimes that's a really fun concept. And sometimes it's like, I just want to get lost in the story without having to like try to think about like clues for the leveler and all this stuff. And in this story, I really got just genuinely invested in these characters without feeling like I was having to really follow a bunch of details about the nameless and the path of the open hand and all of this. Like I was able to just really enjoy the characters and connect with their stories and just stay invested in that. And that was enough for me. And we did get a really cool connection with Aslan's journal that maybe we'll see where that ends up going. But even with that aside, I really found myself very quickly invested in Master Ravna, 
Arkoff, especially ZZ. And I just really, really enjoyed that for that reason. And as I was saying at the beginning of the video, that's something that Daniel Jose Older does super well is like getting you really invested in characters. And uh, that's, I mean, that's what really makes a story for me a lot of times. But let me know in the comments what you thought if you read this one, especially if you've read other Star Wars mangas. I'd be interested to hear how this one stacks up for you. But thanks so much for watching, guys, and I hope that y'all have a great rest of your day. Bye, y'all.